Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Coach Johnson back here to talk a little bit more about the Power Raid on the YouTube channel. Um, you know, thank you for everybody that subscribes to me and everybody that shares my information and anybody um, that comments down below, and I'll try and get to you as fast as I possibly can. So today is going to be something fun that I like to talk about because game of football is supposed to be fun. Uh, I want to talk about some of the crazy formations or unique things that we'll do inside of our offense uh, to try and give us a numbers advantage and just you know, have fun, let the kids have fun, let them name it, um, you know, just ways to, you know, put some strain on the defense. And one of the things when we talk about our power rate philosophy that you'll see is one big one that we believe in is formations over plays. So we keep it super simple with the amount of plays, which if you follow the YouTube, you know that, that you know, we don't run and carry, uh, you know, a big old playbook. You know, we keep it simple. But the one thing that we do is a variety of formations, whether, um, and you'll see whether we stack it, whether we bring in the formation tight, you know, whether we go quads, empty, um, all those things we'll kind of talk about. Um, and within that this year, we also did with those formations. We only, you know, some of the times we only have like one or two plays that are attached to that formation. And we'll try to go fast, but it's either something that we see on film or, you know, we're trying to get a numbers game or, you know, a mismatch when it comes to what the, how the defense is going to take care of it um, based on what we've seen on film. So that's a little bit what we're going to talk about today. Um, once again, just trying to have, you know, fun on the football field and some of the formations that I'm going to go through, I'll tell you, we don't, we didn't do it running on varsity, but we had a blast on JV. Kids had fun with it, allowed us to have some success. Um, so that's one of those things that we're going to talk about, but otherwise we're going to have some film of what we did on the varsity level and why we do it. And I'll, you know, go on to the huddle playbook and we're going to talk about some of these formations, but, um, you know, once again, let's, let's get after it and let's get into the lab. So one of the ways that we will also manipulate the defense is based on being able to move our H back. So on the screen here, we have him in our sniffer set, you know, fullback, eight U back set right there on the right side, which we'll call Rhino. The other way that we'll manipulate this is we'll put him on the left side and we call that elephant. We can also put him on the right side wing and we'll also manipulate it and we'll go and put him on the left side wing and then once again moving around is make him a conventional tight end with his hand in the dirt whether it's on the right side or the left side and we'll also bring him in the backfield where it looks like we have two backs so that's one way i mean just in that in general all right you had the two wings you have your two sniffers be on different sides of the line and then also in the backfield so just right there is that seven ways to a defense that would be different, but we know how to put him in certain spots based on what we're running. So now the one thing that I wanted to talk about is what we'll do is we'll stack. So now if you think about all the different ways of the wing, putting his hand in the dirt, you know, having him at the sniffer spot. Now one thing that we'll do is we can also go where we stack either side of the receivers. And now if you add that, that's a whole nother way that defenses will break that down. And then you add up where the running back is up on the left or the right um, based on what the play is going to be. So that's one thing that I like to do um, is that we will go ahead and we will go stack with our receivers. We love to do this, especially when it comes to the RPO game. You know, I love, I love watching – Tennessee. I love watching Lane Kiffin, you know, and I love watching all the air raid teams and the run and shoot teams. And the one thing with the stack is it allows one person to not get pressed at all. And it's a nice, easy release. And you're able to get your splits super wide and we'll go to where uh, we'll call it wide and they'll be, you know, only a yard or two off of the sideline. And we're trying to manipulate, make the defense decide if they're going to respect it or not. And if you have a quarterback that has a really good arm, you know, you can get that ball out there quick. And now if you're a two-on-one, you know, there's nobody out there. And one thing that we like to do with it is we'll call stack and we'll call our smoke screen, which allow – what we'll do is that means that if we're going smoke screen right, this guy's blocking the corner. We'll release our tackle. We'll release our guard. And our running back gets out there. So now he's got four blockers out there to make something happen. And usually it's to one of our, our athletes or one of our playmakers. So we like to do that. All right, one other thing that we'll like to do out of our spread is we'll go spread, spread tight. We really love to run, like mesh out of this. So we'll go spread tight. And what that means is that the inside guy is about a yard or two 
outside off the tackle, and the outside receiver is no more than five yards. One thing that we like to do is we'll see if the if the defense will travel inside the box. Um, if they do, then we'll try and get some outbreaking routes. We'll just hit some arrows, uh, or we'll try to run off to the perimeter. So those are some things that we like to do out of spread. So we'll stack it. We'll use our wing. We'll use our sniffer. Uh, we'll bring them in nice and tight. So right now what I really want to do is I want to give you some examples of how we manipulate with different wing spots, uh, different places for the tight end, and to show our splits in our stack. Here we are. We are in our spread stack. And as you can tell by the alignment, look how far we are out. You know, we have our one group right outside the numbers and the other receivers are pretty sure the numbers aren't over there, but I'm pretty sure that they're, you know, only a couple yards off of the sideline. So we like to run some smoke screens out of there, but this is one that we ran our switch. We saw, you know, the team that we're playing, they played against another team that had done some type of stack or bunches, and we saw that there was a little bit of miscommunication, so we wanted to take advantage of that. And we also have some really tall receivers and a fast kid out there as well. So we decided that we wanted to go with a four vert switch. And so what you'll see is our outside guy takes the inside and then our outside guy, our inside guy goes to the outside. And you'll see that there was a, a miscommunication in the DB area and we get a nice wide open touchdown. And so there's no communication with that switch and we get a nice easy touchdown. All right. And here we are. So now this is where we're showing that we could line up our tight end here as a wing, a sniffer on either side, or put his hand in the dirt. We have, uh, have an example of where we put his hand in the dirt on the next play. But here we are, we're running our smoke screen. So what will happen is you will have one, two, three, and four. Normally we have our running back go out there as well. So we probably had this on as an RPO. So we have four guys going out there, and as you can tell, they have one, two, three. So we have the numbers um, even to the field. So here is a nice big play off of a nice smoke screen. So our quarterback sees it, pulls, pulls it, and now everybody gets going. And we have numbers, and they take a bad angle and a touchdown because of how far out we're playing. Our next one, so this is where we can put our tight end with his hand in the dirt. So this is our, our tight end right here. And what we're going to do is if they don't account for him, we're going to run our little arrow RPO to the field. So that's a lot of area, and our tight end is very good. And so one thing that we want to do is get him out in space, make them tackle him, and let him you know be an athlete and be a big playmaker. So we go in, we have our two receivers strength to the boundary, with our single receiver and our tight end. And as you can tell, they lose track of our tight end because we're pulling our GT concept with an arrow and everybody flows with the to run fit and our tight end releases. And now we have an athlete out in space. And it's super simple. So those are some ways that we uh, will use our stack uh, that we will put our tight end in a bunch of different spots and it allows us to, to create a number advantage against the defense. The next thing that we'll do when we go back into the lab is we're gonna talk about uh, some things that we do out of our trips. One of the things we like to do is see how people handle trips, and we have a bunch of different ways to get to it. So our first one here is just trips right, our most basic way of getting to it. But what, you know, sometimes when defenses break it down, this would be a quads type look because we have our running back over on that side with them. But what we'll do is we can stack it, and what we'll do is we'll have Z and then our H, because that's our, you know, our U back, our bigger guy, and our Y will go behind. So what this does is we'll like to throw a little bit of smoke screens out of it, and now you have two guys blocking, a running back blocking, and then the two linemen when we go out there. So now you have created a whole offensive line with the five guys for our Y to make a, to make a play with the ball in his hands. Another thing that we, we like to do is we'll put our H with his hand in the dirt. Like I said, that's one way of, you know, manipulating the defense because now you create a whole nother gap and we will have our Y and our Z and we call this Trey. Here's another thing that we have done with that is we'll call Trey right and now we'll actually stack our receivers 
And now this is a nice easy throw for the quarterback because it's a straight line throw. And now what you're doing is you're either forcing a safety to come over top or if that backer is apexing, now all of a sudden there's possibly nobody there if the defense does not communicate very well. So this is one way that we'll manipulate that. So we did, so we talked about that. And now what we'll do is we'll go trio. So if we call trio right, our tight end knows he lines up opposite. And now we put our Z on the ball. And now X comes over, which is one of the only times we ever bring our X to the con or to the formation strength side. And now our Y is our is our most inside slot. We love to run buck out of this. Once again, what you're doing now is you have a passing strength or a formation strength when it comes to the skill guys on one side, and you're adding a strain to the defense with a gap added to the back side of that. So now their defensive line, if they don't communicate right, the, the one back side of the defense and the front side of the defense and your linebackers, the second level, if they're not all on the same page, you might have either no responsibility out there for the DBs or you do not have a way of containing or your or make sure that you have 100% and your run fits on that side. So that's what we call trio. And to now me mix with that, we can now go trio stack. And so now that's a whole nother way to line up when it comes to that formation. Another one that we're going to add this year is now where we can go trio right triangle. So a trio right triangle is is now y is behind is still stacked and now x is in the slot and now it's a different look and it, we call it triangle because it's another triangle way and now you have a lead blocker if you're doing rpo type game um, and now your x is in the slot and the y is now stacked so that's one way of getting to it another one that we'll like to do is we can go trio right slot and what that means is now z's off the ball x is in the slot with and he's on the ball and now Y is behind there and that creates a nice easy way of getting to a smoke screen. So those are a couple of ways that we like to, we can manipulate out of all that. Um, the next one that we will also do is we will go with our bunch and we'll put X back over here. And so we'll bunch it and we'll have our H, we'll set it. Our Y will be inside and our Z will be the outside. So there's so that's one way that we'll call it bunch. And one other thing that we can always do with all of these uh, that you know will cause the defense for some concern is we can go bunch type. So we use you know stack. We can use Y. We'll call it bunch, and that's all a bunch of different ways out of one formation to cause a bunch of different looks uh, for when the defense has to study it. So that is one way that we'll call, and this is called bunch type. So that is the different ways that we'll get to our trio type uh, type formations. Here we are on film. Here is our favorite trips, uh, minus the normal trips that we like to get into. And this is trio, where we were talking about where we put our tight end to the opposite side of the trips. So you'll see here that they're playing man, no high safety. They kept their corner over here and we're getting a five man line with two backers. So we like to run buck sweep out of this, and we actually ran quarterback buck sweep because of the number advantage. And so with them trying to get lined up and they're playing man, you have a guy right before the snap of the ball is not even taking a look at what's going on when it comes to the quarterback and the offense, and he bumps into his linebacker. The defensive line is super tight, so now we have a whole gap that there's no responsibility, and we're able to hit buck sweep super tight in there and because of a misalignment we have a nice nice long run uh, because they went to man dbs didn't communicate so kind of those things that we're looking to do on offense the next thing that we'll do is this is an example of where we stack it again and what you'll see is because we they do not have the numbers out there we got one on one two on two running backs coming out and these two will release as well they don't have enough guys to take care of our screen game and we get make a guy miss, and we're off to the races. So there's an example of our stack look out of trips. Here is where we have our tight end with his hand in the dirt to create a trips look. And so you have our Y in the slot, our Z is off the ball, and our tight end, and we run sail out of this. Uh, our tight end, because our rule is we usually would run, we like to run an arrow when it's a trips. 
but with his hand in the, in the dirt, we were trying to put a strain on this guy right here because if he stays on the tight end, this guy was taking away the, the go and then the sale was getting covered by the safety and we felt like it was going to be wide open. So what we got in here is the linebacker is actually the one taking the tight end, but we take that as a four star on a you know high school linebacker. We like that matchup, puts the ball in there, and now we have some room for our tight end to make a play. Now here's a couple examples of our bunch. So here we are in the red zone. We get a three on three and a one on one out here. It's actually a GT counter, but we hit the glance because there's no safety because we've now made them have to create uh, numbers in a box to try and stop the run down in the red zone. We have a three on three and a backside one on one. And so our quarterback sees that, gets out of the mesh, throws it, nice easy touchdown to one of our playmakers. And here's the last example of stuff that we do out of our trips look. And so what we've done here is we've actually put our formation to the boundary with our bunch. And you'll see that we run GT counter because they are not lined up right. And before the snap, they're still moving. And there's nobody on over here for a run fit. We get good blocking. And now we're off to the races because we are lined up for the formation into the boundary. Um, and here we go, one last example, sorry about that. And now we're running what we call trio stack. Um, and so now you have three out there by itself and we get out there, smoke screen, another example of letting your playmakers make plays and we score. So that is us and our different trips variations. The next thing that we'll get into is kind of, we'll go into a uh, heavy, we'll get into some unbalance. Um, and then we'll also show you a couple of our empty sets that we like to get into. So here we are back in our install window. Uh, one of the things that we love to do always is going empty uh, because you have to see the defense, you have to see the check that they make. So when we call empty right, what we do is we put our normal trips right uh, and then we add our running back, it actually goes in the slot to the left. So that's what we like to do at empty right. And we can mess around. We call this king where we'll go, where we'll have the bunch to the right and a stack to the left. So that's one thing that we'll call king. If we want a queen, then we'll flip that, running back will go to the right and we'll make a bunch to the left. Uh, so the other thing that we will also do at empty is what we call Trojan. So what Trojan is for us is that it is trio. So the receivers line up like they normally would for trio. And we are adding our running back as a wing. And we would like to do all of this as it allows us to run some jet package stuff, some quarterback runs. We have some screens off of it. Um, it just allows us to be able to add another trips look, but then also it adds another hole to gaps to the other side with adding our running back as a wing. So it puts a huge strain on what the defense, how they line up to it. Um, we had some fun with that and I'll show you some clips. The other one that we call is Magnum. And what we'll do with Magnum is we're actually just bunching them all up and we're seeing what advantages we have to get to the outside because what you'll see is you'll have about 10 guys inside of this Z and this H. You won't really have anybody out here. And if you do, that's great. Now you have a numbers advantage because you just tell all these guys that run RPOs, you go and, and you go and block and then you know you'll have usually one high safety. So that is what we call out of our Magnum. So we have our empty, our Trojan, and our Magnum. And then also out of empty, we can always add the stacks, we can add the bunches. One other thing that we like to do is we like to go quads, uh, quads and diamonds. So the one that we use the most is what we like to call diamond. So what diamond is, is we'll put our H back as the head guy, because he's gonna be our lead blocker. Our X will go back to the left by himself. Our running back will be the um, bottom point guy. Our Z will line up to the right and our Y to the left because Y we always want in the slot, Z always to the outside. And we'll run some smoke screens out of this. We'll run some run game for a quarterback, uh, some trick plays, you know, we'll do one-on-one -on -one routes with that, that X. So that is our, we call it diamond right, diamond right. So then some of the things that we run also out of quad, it will go normal quad, so quads right. And running back will be the most inside, H, will be inside, 
Y in the slot, and Z will be on the ball. So that is our quads right. Uh, then the other thing that we like to do, and I can show you some film off of that, is we call quattro right. Quattro right is our tight end with his hand in the dirt, and then now we are creating a quads look over here with our running back now in the slot as long. So our running back and our H back, or running back and our Y are usually two of our very fast guys. So now you have two guys, long receivers that can block, and you have two slots out there so you can run different type of screens. Um, and also try to clear out the box for some quarterback runs. Uh, so that's some things that we also like to do out of quads. And one other thing that we'll do is we'll also go quadro right stack. And now you have your four receiver stack. We'll also go quad stack where what we'll do is now X goes by himself, Z gets off the ball, H is your point man. So any type of thing, and then you can always go tight all that. We just try to find ways to have fun. Different formations, you know, don't even, you know, have to have many plays off of all of those, but just to be able to have the defense have to study a little something extra, something that not every team sees, especially in our conference. We were one of the few spread teams, uh, so it makes the defense have to study for it, talk about it. And if, if they take 10, 15 minutes trying to talk about your stacks or your bunches, that means that's 10, 15 minutes less on your normal formations or your normal concepts because you're showing something on film. And so these are a couple of our um different ones that we do out of empty and quads personnel uh we'll go and show some film and then when we come back into the lab we're going to show a little bit of our big formation and our over package that we like to carry so our first example that is just a fun formation for us is quattro so what we have is our tight ends over here with our quad receivers as you can tell we could easily have hit you know a bunch of screens out here because they don't have the numbers um, and then you have two DBs that are just hanging out out there. And so we get some numbers advantage and we run quarterback buck. And as you can tell, nice, easy, you know, that's 11 yards. And we had numbers out there. Um, we come back later in the game and we actually hit some screens off of that. Here is one of my fun ones that I love to do. And this is diamond. We put our big H back, big, bigger guy up there at the point. And we have our guys know that he's blocking the, the point guy, he's got anybody to the inside, and they have him to the outside with our, and we can always put our Y, we can put, we sub our guy, we sub anybody in that can possibly get uh, the ball easily. And so what happens, you see, he takes care of the point man, he's going for the most inside, he's going to the outside, you have two linemen release, and you create a lane for a very explosive receiver, he makes something happen, and you get a nice big play out of it. Um, here's an example of it again. That was to the field. This is into the formation. Uh, as you can tell, they don't go into their check. We have numbers. They're trying to box it with an outside. Inside, there's nobody on our point. We get very good blocking, and we're one-on-one, -on -one, and a better block would have been even bigger. So there's another example of our diamond. And now here's where we have some fun and we're calling Trojan. Uh, so Trojan, remember, is our trips are to the one side and then it is our tight end and our wing to the other side. And as you can tell, they have two guys out here. They have seven, they have seven, six in a box, sorry. And then they lined up kind of almost a man over here. So we are running jet buck sweep. So we know that this guy right now, we're, we have them outflanked. And we have pinning down, getting to the outside, and we're running buck. So now we'll have two guys taking care of him and him. And we get numbers. They take a bad angle. And we score a touchdown on it. Here we are running it again. And now they, and now what we're doing is we're playing games. They overload it on that side because they think that we're running jet. So we fake a jet. And now we run GT counter. One, there's our blocks. He's running with them. And now we have two polars on the other side for a number advantage. And quarterback takes it up the middle. And probably should have kept going, but he dances. And we get 12 yards. Here's a simple, our empty, our empty left. So our running back's out here. And we're running just our simple stick. There it is. Give it to your big man. Make him... Let him make a play, and next thing you know, we end up scoring a touchdown if he makes it there. Great play. 
Here we are again at an empty. So they have to do an empty check. Uh, it looks like for when it looks to me is that they're playing man. He's got his eyes on him. He's got his eyes on him. He's got his eyes on him, uh, eyes on him and eyes on him. So they're playing some type of man when it comes to us, but somebody on their defense, you'll see on the defense side, I don't think that everybody heard the communication because they're playing man, but then collision and nobody goes to the outside and we just ran our snag corner post. This is Magnum. So what you'll see is now we're bunched up. And as you can tell, in the trenches, they have one, two, three, four. And now they have seven guys that have no idea how to line up or what to do, especially down here in the red zone. And by the time they get set, we're running buck sweep. And look at where they're, they've seen that we'll run the jet buck. They'll get out here and now watch our receiver hit that cutback right there with blockers, and it's a nice, easy touchdown. And one more example, here's our empty. And this time what we have done is we actually swapped it, all right, because we can go empty switch, and it means that these two are swapping. And now our fast guy is going there through the middle, and he gets sniped out, but a nice big play. So that is our looks out of our empty and our quads. Now we'll go back into the lab and we're going to talk about uh, a big formation that we like to do and also our twins over. So here is one of the cool things that we will do because we will go where we call our big uh, package. And so what we'll do is we actually add a big lineman on each side. All right, so we'll have seven there. Okay, then what we'll also do is we want to have where it is our best group of guys are over here. So what we'll do is this will be right guard, left guard, left tackle, and we actually bring over, and now we have our right tackle. And then we'll put our H as a wing, sniffer, whatever. And so now, we have that set. So we'll take off a couple of guys, and what we call is this is big right. And so what we're doing is we're overloading our entire offense lines over here. Our Z is off the ball, and our H are off the ball, so we can do some jet motion, and we can also move around our H. So that is our big right. Um, I'll show you a couple of clips that we ran in that. The next thing that we like to do is where we go over. So we're going to go ahead and delete, delete. And we're going to go with our over package. So now what we'll do is when we say over, our H now comes on over and our left tackle is the most outside, right tackle goes over. And our Z and Y are off the ball. And then our X is on the ball, and we actually will bring him a little bit tighter. So that is what we'll do is that we'll call that over because we want to see if they saw that we took an extra old lineman over there. What it also allows us to have our H, and we'll do some different type of RPOs with him. Um, so these are one of our unbalanced. So this is our twins. We'll just call it twins over. It's just over, It's just easy for our guys to understand. And then our first one that we talked about was big. So here we are on film and we are talking about, this is our big formation. So we went big right and we have our two linemen over here and then we have our entire off, starting offensive line on the right side. Our H is off the ball, our Z are off the ball. And so what we do here is we do a little bit of jet with that guy that's off the ball. And now we run our GT counter and we have our entire starting offense line on the right side with our pulling guard and tackle and H back. And you see that there's a huge crease. And so we're able to have some success with that. Well, we come back to this in another situation. And so now we'll run it again. And now we're actually, it's kind of a bash. He'll go across and now we're pulling our lineman and huge play again for us. Sorry for the camera shaking. 
and our quarterback makes a great play. Okay. Now, one last thing that we'll do for this video is it's our over package. So we now have three O-line on, on our left side with our receiver on the ball. And then our tight end is over here. They don't adjust. As you can tell, they're worried about the tight end. So they have three guys over here, two on three there. They don't adjust their linebackers. And we hit a nice, easy power. And we did that a couple of times. And we just kept going fast once our guys knew what was going on. So that is what we did this past year in the power raid with a bunch of unique, crazy formations. Um, like I said, we also did in JV. We added a couple other ones that we'll talk about later. Um, but, the, you know, football is supposed to be fun. Formations is a lot of fun for offense. Um, you don't have to have too many plays to build a package with a formation. But always remember, formations are cheaper than plays and concepts. Um, and you can be very creative with that. But make sure you understand why you're using the formations and doing what you're doing. And you can always throw motion out of there to even cause more of a, a strain. So that's it for this video. I hope you really enjoy it. Uh, share it, comment, ask me if you have any questions. Hit me up on Twitter X, whatever we're calling it these days, at Coach M.M. Johnson. Uh, let me know what you think down below. Uh, I'm excited to hear what people have to say. You know, I, there's a lot of different unbalanced stuff that I want to get into. Um, you know, I, like I said, I, I love the game of football. I love the offensive side. Love to see how I can get better. Um, so just share any ideas you have. Let me know what you think. And just continue to have fun with the game of football.